I want to have uh, Daniel come up and share a little bit with me about the power of connecting with God's Word. And the power that can be available to any of us. So, I appreciate Daniel being willing to do this. We um, we've been talking about God's power and the and the ways of connecting to it. And um, Daniel, can you share a little bit about um, what inspired you to get into God's Word? Yeah. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, share some thoughts and some of what I've been learning uh, about the Bible. Um, you know, when I begin to realize what the Bible really is, uh, I think that's <clears throat> when I couldn't help but, but dive into it. In ancient Greece, they, had, uh, they built these magnificent temples to their god Apollo. And uh, at the temple of Apollo in the city of Delphi, uh, they had... A priestess there, and she was known as the, the Pythia, or the Oracle at Delphi. This woman would sit in the inner part of the temple, and she would sit suspended ab- ab- above this hole in the ground. Okay? And out of this hole came these fumes, these gases, that uh, would basically put her in an altered state of consciousness. Some say it was the equivalent to sniffing glue. Okay? So she would, uh, uh, in her state of ecstasy, ecstasy get these oracles, receive these oracles from their god Apollo. And she would then relay these oracles to the high priest who was there with her. Okay, and then the high priest would then make his way through the temple, and he would come to the entrance, and he would undo the latch, and open the big door. Boom. Big door. Boom. And he would come face to face with all these people. And he'd come from miles around, eagerly anticipating a word from Apollo, their god. And as they listened intently, he would relay these oracles to them, and it might be something as uh, simple as, if you make sacrifices to Apollo, and if you honor Apollo with your gifts, then your crops and your business will be blessed. And he'd step back inside. Boom. Boom. And you can kind of sense their, their awe and their fear as the message was delivered. And you can sense their passion as we will do exactly as Apollo has told us to do. And so I'm learning about this, right? And, and as I'm, I'm learning about this, I'm thinking, you know, what, what's happened to us? I mean, do we not understand that the, the oracles of the living God, not the utterings of some woman who's high out of her mind, but the, the very words of God have been given to us, right? I mean, they've been given to you. You have them. You have all of them. And some of you have them sitting underneath the seat right there in front of you. You have them sitting on your shelf at home. You know, the very, the very words of God. And I, and I was thinking, you know, what, what's happened to our awe of the Holy Scriptures? You know, where's our passion to, to hear and follow the oracles of God? You know, Peter wrote this about the prophets of God. <clears throat> Excuse me, one of his letters. He said, above all, You must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And Paul, in his uh, letter to Timothy, one of his letters to Timothy, he said, All Scripture is inspired by God, and it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So you see, the Word of God is everything we need to live life to the fullest. And if we really believe that that God has spoken, and that this is our standard by which we test all things, this is our authority, then we should stop just merely giving lip service to God's Word. And we need to fall in love with his words Mm -hmm. all over again. And I think one of the reasons we're not completely enamored with the Word of God is that we're not entirely convinced that it is the Word of God, that these are the words of God. But, you know, the more I study the evidence, the more I'm I'm absolutely certain that the Bible is divine as opposed to being merely human in origin. Mm. And uh, 
So when I, you know, when I began to realize that the word of God uh, had been given to me in my own language, it just uh, it made me not want to take the Bible for, for granted anymore. Amen.